Welcome to Special Parallelograms Proofs by me, Mr. Pi the Math Guy. And talking about special parallelograms, we're going to do one proof with a rectangle and one proof with a rhombus. Those are the two special types of parallelograms. Here in example five, the reason I'm starting with example five is because this is the second of a two-part series on special parallelograms. So we're going to prove a theorem. The theorem we're going to prove is here in the orange. The diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So what we're given is that we have rectangle A, B, C, D, and we need to prove that di the diagonals, segment AC, is congruent to segment BD. And to do that, we're going to do a triangle proof, and we're going to prove the triangle on the left, triangle ADC, is congruent to triangle BCD. Uh, we're going to do that by side angle side. We can prove that AD is congruent to BC, and we can prove that DC is congruent to itself. We're also going to be able to prove that angle ADC and angle BCD are congruent because of the right angle. So here's how we're going to put together that proof. I just outlined it for you verbally. Here we're going to write it out now. The first step of any proof is to write the given down, and in this case we're given that we have rectangle. A, B, C, D, and the reason for that is our given, and here I'm going to start the triangle proof, or I'm going to prove that A, D is congruent to B, C, And the reason for that is the definition of a parallelogram. And I abbreviate parallelogram, that's L's or the par parallel symbol, O-gram. So that's the definition of a parallelogram. So we can mark those congruent. Now we're going to be able to say that DC is congruent to itself, and I usually mark that with an X because of the reflexive property. Now we have two of our sides congruent. Notice I'll write that as CD. That's keeping the order of the vertices correct. And that's the reflexive property of congruence. The fourth step then is to be able to, or not to be able to, but to state that angle ADC and angle BCD are right angles. We first have to say that they're right angles by the definition of rectangle. So we're going to say angle ADC and angle BCD are right angles. That's an R. And that's by the definition of rectangle. The next step is to now to say that they're congruent, that angle ADC is congruent to angle BCD, and that's because all right angles are congruent. The sixth step is now that we have side, angle, side in each of the triangles, we can make our triangle congruent statement saying the triangle AD, ADC is congruent to triangle BCD. And that's because of the side, angle, side theorem. Now, that we have those two triangles prove congruent, we can say that segment AC is congruent to segment BD because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And thus we have proved that the diagonals of a rectangle in fact are congruent. 
And that concludes this theorem. Example 6, we're going to prove another theorem. Here in orange is the theorem we're going to prove. The diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular. The idea of we're working with a rhombus fits very well with the idea that we're talking about special parallelograms. So we have to remember the properties of parallelograms when working with special parallelograms. In this particular proof, we're at, given the rhombus AB, CD, and we need to prove that segment AC is perpendicular to segment BD. To do that, to give you an idea of where we need to take this proof, is we're going to need to prove that these two angles in here, right here there I'm putting a dot, and right there where I put a dot, we need to prove that those two angles are congruent. If we can prove that they're congruent, then we can prove that they're right angles because if they're congruent and supplementary, they have to be right angles. And that's actually a theorem. So that's what we're going to focus in on. To do that, we're going to complete a triangle proof, then use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent to show that these two angles in here are in fact congruent. So our first statement, as always, is our given. In this case, we're just given that we have rhombus ABCD. And of course, the reason for that is given. The second step here is to state that segment AD is congruent to segment CD. In fact, all the sides of a rhombus are congruent because of the definition of a rhombus. So we can state then that AD is congruent to segment CD. And that's because of the definition of a rhombus. In case you're unaware, what I'm starting now is going to be a triangle proof. And what I'm going to do is prove this triangle over here is congruent to this triangle over here. In fact, I'm going to prove triangle AED is congruent to triangle CED. And I'm going to use side, side, side. So I've got one pair of sides proved congruent. The second side I'm going to prove congruent is I'm going to prove congruent segment ED. I'm going to prove it congruent to itself. I usually place an X on that to indicate I'm using the reflexive property. So segment ED is congruent to segment ED. And that's because of the reflexive property of congruence. The fourth step here is going to be to state that AE is congruent to CE. And that's because of a theorem about parallelograms that state the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So the next statement is going to be that segment AE is congruent to segment CE. And that's because the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. I'm using the parallel symbol there, the parallelogram. Now that I have three sides of two triangles proved congruent to each other, I can make a triangle congruent statement stating the triangle AED is congruent to triangle CED. And that's because of side, side, side. Now that I have the two triangles congruent, I can prove that these two angles are congruent to each other. So I can say that angle AED is congruent to angle CED. That's my next statement. That angle AED is congruent to angle CED. That should be step six there, not seven. And that's because of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Now here's where we pull in another theorem that maybe you forgot. 
Since these two angles are congruent and supplementary, that means that they are right angles. So we're going to write down that angle AED and angle CED are right angles. Or that should be an E. And that's because of a theorem, and you have to write it out. It doesn't have one of those special names. So you write out if two angles are congruent and supplementary, then they are right angles. And now that we've established that at least one of these are a right angle, we can state that segment AC and BD are perpendicular. And that's why the definition of perpendicular. Well, you can see we have our proof statement. So we finished this proof. So what it boiled down to was using a triangle proof to use corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, a little known theorem, and then finally, just a definition of perpendicular to prove a theorem that you can now use in class.